Hello, you're with Forces News on our YouTube channel and across the world on BFBS television. Welcome to a special live programme. These pictures are coming to you directly from Stanley and as you can see, the weather there is very, very typical, some might say. There is blustery winds blowing in torrential horizontal rain. So from time to time, as you saw right at the start of our broadcast, our camera operator will have to clear the lens. So apologies for that, but it is the weather. Our cameras are at Stanley Cemetery, which will be the focal point for the island's commemorations this Remembrance Sunday. I'm Tim Cooper, and I'll be with you for the next half an hour or so, bringing you live coverage of this special service, where at 11 a.m. local time, the islands will fall silent to honour those who have fallen in war. The ceremony this year is especially poignant, as it's the 40th anniversary year of the Falklands conflict. Welcome to you, whether you're watching on our Forces News YouTube channel or BFBS TV Channel 8 around the Forces world. Well, as I speak, people are gathering at the memorial and a little way distant, you can just see the spire, or the tower rather, of Christ Church Cathedral, where a service has been taking place this morning. Setting off from there around now will be the parade, which will journey along Ross Road into Crozier Place, and then to the road we see here in this picture, Ross Road East. In a few minutes' time, they will parade along and be here at the Cross of Sacrifice. The Cross of Sacrifice was originally erected in 1926 in Stanley as a World War I memorial. It now commemorates both world wars, with the addition of a bronze plaque after the second. Remembrance parades are held at the Cross annually on Remembrance Sunday, which of course, as we know, is the Sunday closest to the 11th of November. The Cross stands right at the front of Stanley Cemetery, which itself is over 150 years old. As well as Falkland Islanders, the cemetery has graves of men of the Royal Navy and Merchant Navy who drowned nearby, and also Commonwealth War graves. The Cross of Sacrifice is very common in Commonwealth War graves and cemeteries, and is in fact at every one containing 40 or more graves. It's the shape of an elongated Latin cross, with portions more typical of the Celtic cross. And when you see one, you know that there are substantial numbers of Commonwealth War graves within the cemetery site. So once again, if you're just joining us, welcome. This is Forces News with you live, and these pictures are coming to you directly from Stanley, the capital of the Falkland Islands. As you can see, many of the population of this small city are beginning to gather at the Cross of Remembrance. Some members of the clergy coming into place, members of the military already standing vigil at the site of the Cross. You'll also notice that the weather is very, very unpleasant. Two days ago for the Armistice Day parade in Stanley were bright blue skies. But as we can see now, we're having to wipe the rain from the lens and hold the camera steady to keep it from blowing away. It really is, I'm told, uh, by our team down in Stanley, that windy. But I want to draw your attention now to something very unique that is uh, part of the display, and that is the Tommy silhouettes that you may or may not be able to see in that shot, but you certainly can in this. They're in front of and surrounding the memorial, 258 in total, representing the 255 British military personnel and three Falkland Islanders who lost their lives in the Falkland conflict in 1982. They stand six feet tall and a hand made by a group called Standing With Giants, an Oxfordshire community project set up three years ago by Dan Barton. And the team there work in their spare time using recycled road signs for their raw materials. And they've created a lot of art installations. The 258 we see here are only a small proportion of those that are on show this Remembrance Sunday. There are a thousand forces silhouettes on display in total. Others back in the UK at Hampton Court Palace, Lord Rothschild's Wadston Manor, and also the International Bomber Command Centre in Lincolnshire and they do make an impressive sight. It is coming up to 20 to 11 in the Falkland Islands, in the UK, 20 to 2. And this is the scene in the capital, Stanley, 
We're looking right out over the water. For those that have not been, Stanley lies as a coastal community stretched along here. In the far distance, we can see Christchurch Cathedral, where the marchers are making their way from to this site for the next solemn act this Remembrance Sunday for the community in the South Atlantic, which is the two minute silence at 11 o'clock. You're watching Forces News on our YouTube channel and on BFBS Channel 8 as we bring you these pictures from Stanley, the capital of the Falkland Islands, as we prepare to join with them as they commemorate Remembrance Sunday. It is a very special year for the Falkland Islands. It's the year of commemoration, marking 40 years since the islands were invaded by Argentina. The conflict began on the 2nd of April 1982 with the invasion of the Falklands and occupation, followed the following day by the invasion of South Georgia. On the 5th of April, the British government dispatched a naval task force to engage the Argentine Navy and Air Force before beginning their amphibious assault on the islands. Britain was shocked by early losses of several Royal Navy vessels, HMS Sheffield and HMS Coventry among them. On the night of the 21st of May, the British Amphibious Task Group, under the command of Commodore Michael Clapp, mounted Operation Sutton. That was the amphibious landing on beaches around San Carlos water. The fight to retake the Falkland Islands had begun. 4,000 men of 3 Commander Brigade were put ashore, people from 2nd Battalion Parachute Regiment, 40 Commando Royal Marines. The landing ship, amphibious assault ship HMS Fearless was landed at San Carlos, 3rd Battalion Parachute Regiment from the amphibious HMS Intrepid, which landed at Port San Carlos, Green Beach. 4-5 Commando from RAF Stromness, RFA I should say, Stromness. It was a massive effort to get everybody down there. But the fierce fighting that followed again took everybody in the UK when they heard about it by surprise. There were fierce battles. Names like Goose Green, Mount Kent, Bluff Cove, Fitzroy, Mount Tumbledown became well known in the UK psyche, not just as places in the Falkland Islands, which let's face it, many people hadn't even heard of until the conflict, but locations for fearsome, fearsome actions, which eventually secured the Falklands' freedom. The conflict lasted for 74 days and ended with an Argentine surrender on the 14th of June, returning the islands to British control. In total, 255 British military personnel and three Falkland Islanders died during the hostilities. 649 Argentine military personnel also lost their lives. The fact this happened 40 years ago is one of the reasons we're bringing you these live pictures from Stanley, the capital of the Falklands. At the Cross of Remembrance, Four service personnel stand in a square around its base, heads bowed, waiting as the parade begins its approach to, at 11 o'clock, take us to the solemn moment of commemoration. A short service will take place before that time. Prayers will be said from the various faith groups in the Falklands. A roll of honour will be read out and a member of the local Falkland Islands government will pray, let us remember before God those who have died for their country in war. So, thank you for watching wherever you are, and very shortly, in fact, I can see in the distance the parade beginning to make its way down Ross Road East towards Stanley Cemetery. If you are just joining us, uh, let me say, as you can probably gather, the weather there in Stanley is um, a bit wet and very, very windy. So we're getting rain blowing straight into the lens of our camera from our um, high camera position. But there we can see the start of the parade coming into view. down. I could tell
tell you this, when they get closer, you'll be able to see them better, let me put it that way. But let me begin to run through some of the people taking part in this parade today. And you can see now more clearly in front of the people marching, those Tommy silhouettes that I was mentioning earlier, the 258 in total here, erected in Stanley in honour of the 255 British military personnel and three Falkland Islanders who lost their lives during the Falklands conflict. So at the very head of the parade, now coming down the road towards us, is Major Dustin McPhee. The honour of leading this special ceremony, he is a member of the Falkland Islands Defence Force. Then the military personnel, in the order we've come to expect. The senior service is the leading service, the Royal Navy of course. And most of the personnel marching today come from the patrol vessel HMS Forth, which is stationed down here as the South Atlantic patrol vessel. Secondly, the Army, who are led by four Princess of Wales's Royal Regiment, four PWRR. You can see them second as the second group. Thirdly, the Royal Air Force. Those members, men and women based at Mount Pleasant, an hour's journey from here. And the fourth group we see, the Falkland Islands Defence Force, local volunteers who offer their spare time to serve in a defence force capacity. The rear guard, the veterans. 150 to 160 who fought in the Falklands conflict, including senior veterans Major General Nick Vox, commanding officer of 4-2 Commando in 1982. As the head of the parade, a drummer from two Royal Gurkha rifles just passes our camera. And now the personnel begin to assemble. Several standards are being carried by Royal British Legion and South Atlantic Medal Association, Summer 82. And they're now just getting into position for the solemn part of the day, which is the act of remembrance at 11. There are over 130 Falkland veterans who have travelled from RAF Bryce Northern, especially for this act of remembrance. Most of them came on a flight last Wednesday, arranged by the Ministry of Defence, and many are being accommodated in private homes of the islanders, as well as in the hotels, and Liberty Lodge, which is a special location that has been set up uh, in honour and support, and ongoing support of uh, right. veterans. Left and right, two. Right, shoulder, out. So right, we... inward, rest. We have now Amidst the gloom, the orders getting serving personnel and veterans into their correct positions before the service can begin in some 11 or 12, 11 minutes' time. The dignitaries and here we have actually now the veterans marching in to warm applause. Many of the men parading today have not been to the Falklands since they fought for these islands' liberation in 1982. Huge support from the Falkland Islanders braving the weather to come out to show their thanks 
to our veterans. The service will begin in less than a minute's time. We are awaiting now the arrival of the Commander British Forces of the South Atlantic Islands, Commodore Jonathan Lett. Dr. Andrew Murrison, MP, Minister for Defence People, Veterans and Service Families. Her Excellency Ms. Alison Blake, the Governor of the Falkland Islands and His Majesty's Commissioner of the South Georgia and South Sandwich Islands. And MLA Ian Hansen, Member of the Falkland Islands Legislative Assembly. They will very presently be arriving and then the service will begin. If you are just joining us, these are pictures live from Stanley, capital of the Falklands, where serving personnel and more than 100 veterans have gathered for the act of remembrance on Remembrance Sunday in the Falkland Islands. who, with veterans behind them and school children flanking them, will make their way to their positions. CBF South Atlantic Islands, Commonwealth Jonathan Lett, Dr. Andrew Murrison, Minister for Defence People, Veterans and Service Families, Her Excellency Ms. Alison Blake, the Governor of the Falklands, and His Majesty's Commissioner of the South Georgia and South Sandwich Islands, and MLA Ian Hansen, member of the Falklands Legislative Assembly, gather. And so the service will now begin, led by Reverend Ian Folds, former rector. Of the Falkland Islands. We are here to worship Almighty God, whose purposes are good, whose power sustains the world he has made, who loves us though we have failed in his service, and who gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, for the life of the world. As we give thanks for his compassionate and healing love, we remember all those who have lived and died in his service and in the service of others. We pray for all who suffer through war and are in need. We ask for his help and blessing that we may do his will and that the whole world may acknowledge him as Lord and King. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we give you humble thanks for the memory and good example of those who have laid down their lives in the service of our country. We thank you for their courage and devotion. Grant that the example of their unselfish service may not have been in vain, that we and all people may offer ourselves, our own selfish service to you and humanity. We pray for our armed 
Armed Services engaged in areas of conflict and danger throughout the world. We thank you for your devotion to duty and readiness to serve. Grant them that wisdom and self-control they need in the face of difficult circumstances. And grant us faithfulness in supporting them now and in the future. Pray for all those who care, for those who have served in the armed forces, and who care for their families. We especially pray for the work of the Royal British Legion in its many activities, and for the work of Sama 82 in caring for the veterans of the conflict here in 1982. May we be steadfast in our support for these organisations those they seek to strive. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are going to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Thank you. 
Ha, ha, ha. 
loss of sacrifice. From the civic community here in the Falkland Islands, the governor, the political community from the United Kingdom who've journeyed to be part of this, and the military community, Commander British Forces South Atlantic Islands, Commandant, Commandant Jonathan Lett, placing his wreath now. And now we come to the closing prayer. Reverend Ian Folds, former rector of the Falklands, will deliver it. other members of the veteran community who were here in 1982 lay their tributes. around this memorial, encircling it. A circle of red, at the base of the memorial dedicated to sacrifice.
dignitaries make their way to the base of the steps, where we will shortly hear the royal salute. of the dignitaries, more wreaths can be laid at the cross of sacrifice from veterans, from local people, from those who fought here in 1982, to some of those who lost loved ones in that conflict. Young and old have gathered today to remember sacrifices made in years gone by as members of the local scout troop, beavers, cubs, themselves come to look at the memorial. And so we come to the end of our broadcast from Stanley, the capital city of the Falkland Islands, as they came together for Remembrance Sunday. From all of us at Forces News, Thank you for watching. Goodbye.